The harnessing of water to provide power was one of man's earliest sources of mechanical energy. The Egyptians had water wheels in 2000 BC, as did the Romans in ancient times. This video examines a number of small hydro schemes, ranging from the small to the very small. The Rubicon scheme is one of the smallest electrical generating schemes on the Victorian state generating grid. It was built in the 1920s and was designed to supplement the Eildon hydroelectric scheme. It's a stream flow system, that is, there's negligible storage in its dams, and when it rains a lot, it generates a lot of power, and if it doesn't rain much, it doesn't generate much power. This complements the Eildon scheme, which produces its maximum output in summer when it releases the maximum amount of irrigation water. The scheme is located near Eildon, northeast of Melbourne. It takes its water from the Rubicon River and from the Royston River. The water is diverted from these rivers by small dams into a network of aqueducts. Gullies are crossed by pipelines. You see here the water entering a pipeline and it emerges about 100 metres away. to continue along the aqueduct. The aqueduct leads to the penstock, which is the pipeline which goes down to the power station. At the power station, the water is used to drive turbines, which drive electrical generators, which are connected to the state electricity grid. There are two kinds of turbines, and both are used in this scheme. There are impulse turbines and reaction turbines. An impulse turbine here, the Pelton wheel is shown the Pelton wheel extracts energy from water by first converting the head of water into kinetic energy by passing it through a carefully shaped nozzle that produces a free jet discharging in air. The buckets on the periphery of the wheel remove the maximum velocity from the water. Reaction turbines such as the Francis and Kaplan can operate fully submerged and they operate more in the manner of a ship's propeller. Impulse turbines are generally used where there is a high head available and reaction turbines when there is a lower head available. The smallest power station in the scheme is the Rubicon Falls station. Water is diverted from the Rubicon River by a small dam above the falls and sent to a power station below the falls. A single Pelton wheel turbine drives a 250 kilowatt generator which generates enough power for possibly a hundred homes.
the Royston Power Station is fed with water from the Royston Dam which flows through an aqueduct to the Penstock and then down to the power station. A single Francis turbine generates 800 kilowatts of electrical power. The outlet from the turbine is flared to extract the maximum amount of energy from the water. The water flowing out of this station is then combined with water diverted from the Rubicon Dam. And this water is taken by aqueduct to the penstock above the Rubicon power station. There, two Pelton turbines generate 4.8 megawatts of power apiece. A small railway line is used to maintain the aqueducts and pipelines. A deal of efforts made to pick up even small flows of water. So although the flow is quite low, the head is very high and significant amounts of power can result. We can estimate the amount of power involved in this small flow of water. I would estimate the flow to be about 2 litres a second. And calculate the power by multiplying the flow times the head times the gravitational constant. The flow is 2 litres a second and the head is 425 metres and the gravitational constant is 9.8. The power is 2 times 425 times 9.8 equals 8,300 watts or 8.3 kilowatts. The annual value in dollars of this 8.3 kilowatts can be estimated. The electricity is worth 2.5 cents per kilowatt hour at the generator. And the generator generates for about 4,000 hours a year. The saving is 8.3 kilowatts times 0.025 of a dollar times 4,000 hours or $830 per year.